dear friends. How's the sound? Is that okay? One, two, three, four, good. Happy Easter. <laughs> Did you have an egg hunt, an Easter egg hunt this morning at your house? <laughs> so, welcome. Anybody here for the first time that wasn't in the intro group? Welcome. Glad you're here. Just check this. I so wish each of you could sit in this seat and look out that way. Maybe we should take turns each week. Who'd like to be up here take it over this week? <laughs> so please join me in this modern rendition of the refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. Buddha, that which is awake. Please become aware that you're seeing. Who does that? How do you see? How does that happen? If you become aware of your bottom where it's touching the chair or the cushion, how do you do that? Something knows it. That's the Buddha taking refuge in that which is awake, noticing what is. That's the Dharma. And we do it in the company of our friends and actually in the company of all of our friends all over the planet from the single-celled organisms to the great whales. We're all this mysterious manifestation of life. And we have a particular responsibility and capacity because we can know that we're here. So that's what the refuge in Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha can mean. So I invite you to join me. I take refuge in the Buddha. The one who shows me the way in this life. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya. I take refuge in the Dharma, the way of understanding. Standing in 
and love. Namo Dharmaya, Namo Dharmaya, Namo Dharmaya. I take refuge in the Sangha, the community of mindful harmony. So let's do what humans have done now for thousands of years. Nothing. Let's sit and do nothing or next to nothing. Let's park the body. Let's notice how mysteriously and wonderfully alive it is. And hello to those of you joining us out on the internet. Wonderful that you're here. Experientially, this body is nothing but life. You could bring awareness into that region of the universe you think of as your hands. And notice that there's life there. You, don't, you probably won't find hands in your direct experience. If you do, you're superimposing an imagination on the direct experience, which is just life. Notice the life in what you think of as your face. You can notice that there's temperature, different temperatures in the body. And quite remarkably, noticing that the body breathes. Usually the breathing is in the background, unnoticed, unappreciated. But here we Bring it to the foreground through simple awareness. And each breath, just like every single other experience of our entire lifetime, each breath has a beginning, birth, genesis. This is not only Easter morning, it's the morning when everything comes into being, moment after moment, the beginning.
we might reflect for a moment how common this breathing phenomenon is. Our cats and dogs breathe. Whales breathe. Cows, deer, birds. Our fishy brothers and sisters don't breathe, but they propel themselves through the water where oxygen replaces carbon dioxide at the gills. Our green brothers and sisters, the trees and planktons, and particularly the great lungs of the earth, the eye and the forests in the Amazon breathe a little differently, they, they <coughs> absorb oxygen and they absorb carbon dioxide and build twigs and branches out of it. And their waste gas is oxygen. Quite a nice symbiotic transfer. So when we pay attention to breathing, we're not attending to an isolated phenomenon. We're paying attention to the essence of life. You are, we are, the earth breathing. And so we intentionally drop out of the world of fantasy and trance and thinking and past and future. We become our, our primordial, natural self, that which breathes. Aware of the beginning, the middle, and the ending of this breath right now. And then observing that the mind has a mind of its own. It wanders and it doesn't really matter how long it wanders. And then there's this waking up that occurs. A sort of magical, mysterious phenomenon that occurs and then there's a certain knowing. And then we allow this knowing to take up the next breath.
to sit like this and to take responsibility for this human consciousness. It's the single most powerful thing we can do for world peace. To actually become peaceful ourselves. To notice the mind when it becomes reactive and the opposite of peace. When it becomes greedy or hateful. When it gets lost in various trance states and delusions. particularly when it becomes identified with enemy imaging, righteousness, self-righteousness, or fear, or doubt, or loneliness, depression. In all these cases, we're called upon to acknowledge reality for what it is. These states exist. And to come home to the simplicity of this gathering of humans, sitting together, breathing, doing the noble work of Taking responsibility, or waking up. Fortunately, that noble undertaking is based in comforting ourselves. In training the mind to come, come sit, stay in a way. To come, be present with the breath. To gently stay with the breath. To rest in the beauty of the present moment.
from the Thai forest tradition. We have some very simple guidance. Anytime you want to bring your practice into perfect balance, <coughs> simply remember this. This moment is like this. This is how this moment is. Perhaps it's a moment of great concentration or great non-concentration, great restlessness. Or it's a moment of tremendous ease or it's a moment of anxiety or fear. It's a moment of doubt or a moment of faith or clear, crisp consciousness or sleepy dullness. The universe and our lives exist in polarities. We wind up having them all. And this all gets clearer and clearer as we abide in the present moment. Resting in the coming and going of the breath. And accepting everything as it is. This doesn't mean, this accepting in practice doesn't mean we don't act decisively in our lives. It means that inwardly we are open to everything that occurs.
is a certain kind, compassionate effort involved. It's more of an intention than an effort. An intention that we practice with persistence. The intention to choose and stay with a training object, a primary object, in this case the breath. So there's the practice of remembrance, of mindfulness, of remembering the intention to stay here with the breath and to awaken to and rein in those states which cause us so much suffering, greed and hatred, worry, Come home to the preciousness of this breath. This breath which is the earth breathing. In a few moments, we'll come to the end of this time of sitting mindfully, being aware of breathing and whatever else happens. But please, let's not think of it as the end of meditation. If we do that, then we relegate meditation to something we do a few minutes a day. Instead, let's realize that this awareness, this remembrance, this presence we're cultivating can be just as effectively cultivated while stretching or moving or preparing dinner or driving the car. And so, in fact, we convert our entire life into greater and greater frequency of moments of being conscious. And I believe that's all that a Buddha is, is a person who has awakened to that continuity of presence. So please bring awareness now into your hands or what you take to be your hands, into your face, into the eyes, 
And then let these eyes roll around a little bit this way and that inside their eloquently, elegantly lu lubricated sockets. And then notice the intention which exists in mind to let these eyes open or to do the work of lifting the eyelids and then seeing. Notice how seeing occurs. There doesn't have to be an I or me that sees, there can be just seeing. And then if you were to let the eyes close again, notice how seeing just disappears. Seeing is conditioned upon the eye, light, visual objects. And then with the eyes closed, noticing any stiffness in your body and maybe the impulse to stretch, to move, and then let that happen very mindfully. Don't don't do it unconsciously, but notice how the body wants to move and then let it move. And then when you're ready, let your eyes open, but don't let them open without knowing it. taking stock of your circumstance right now. The experience of stress, stressedness or ease. And please raise your hand if you're more sane or less stressed right now than when you walked in. And take a moment to look around. Perhaps we should create places at the mall for when you're stressed out, you come here to sit here. There are places, by the way, in almost every airport in which I've ever looked, there's always a chapel or a meditation room. And I've looked in some obscure airports and there's always one. And they're often really beautiful. The one at PDX is quite nice. Uh, there's a gorgeous one in Vancouver airport there and um, so that's a great place if, you know if you have enough time to, to wait you don't have you can go to someplace really with a, a beautiful presence to hang out so mr. Jim all systems are still working adequately to rise and do some movement testing testing good so from here, those of you that are here for the first time, Jim will lead us in some movement. For I'm going to go visit with the kids. Uh, it's some movement, and then I'll come back. And today, I'm going to do my annual uh, reflection on Easter and the Buddha. <coughs> you will want this. Right and breathing. That's the 
the way I like to find myself. <clears throat> so, mindfulness of movement. Let's just uh, swing the arms a little bit. <clears throat> and remember that we have... Uh, no, I, well, remember to be aware of the hands when they're out in front. And remember to be aware of the hands when they're back behind. Are you still there? Are you still there? And then lift. Remember the hands above and outstretched and down. Remember at three places. All the way up, forward, and down. So we just like uh, Oh, what was that? That children's story. Can't think of the name. The cuddly little bear in the... Pooh, Winnie the Pooh. Are you still there? Just checking. Just checking. Checking again, checking again. Now, if we <coughs> sink and lift, how many times can we check between here and here? Are the hands still here? What if we open the arms? Did we lose the hands or do we remember the hands? So part of mindfulness is remembering. Remembering that who is here. And if we reach overhead, who is here? And if we reach straight up again, Turning the palms out, the, the different sensation, and then sinking. We remember the hands crossing, turning, extending, and releasing. And turning to the side with the palms up, remembering the hands extended, close to the body, moving away. Checking in here and here, here again.
relaxing the arms completely and then drawing them back. How many times can we remember the hands around the circle? Lifting across, remembering the foot rising off the heel and the back, and then the other foot rising. Both feet in touch, one foot lifting. Both hands over the shoulder, gazing at the moon. <coughs> Interesting moon the last couple nights. Resting one arm, pressing with the other, remembering the sensations here. Reaching across, feeling one hand rise and face in, let the other hand face towards the floor. Both hands come across the center. We remember them in this position and then switch. Remember the sensations here and then all the way over here, switching. And then remembering not to be attached. This is the end of this form. Can we just drop it? No attachment. Stepping. Reaching. Opening. Sensations in the hands. They're opened. Close to the earth. Outstretched. Riding the waves. The hands pump from the shoulders. How many times can we remember to check in? And then open up, palms up. down. And then coming back to the center, feeling balanced, relaxing the arms, just in touch with the earth.
And lifting one foot and stepping out and splashing in the sea again. Staying with the sensations all the way around the circle. And riding the waves. And then opening the arms, remembering here, remembering here. And back, balanced, even pressure across the bottoms of the feet. Arms relaxed, hanging from the shoulders. And making a fist and sinking. Rise like a dragon from the sea. Relaxing the arms, up on the toes, we'll spread our wings. Remembering here and here and here. And then when we turn the wheel, Staying with the sensations. Changing direction, remembering the sensations. Checking in with poo here and here and here. And back to the center, finding that <coughs> solid connection with the earth. Lifting one hand and one knee, playing with the ball, playing with the marionette. Complicated, but Pooh is still there. And then very simple. Not to forget. And releasing the form, relaxing as a standing form. So we've been <coughs> working out with the remembering muscle. That same quality of attention can be applied to the simplest rhythm of the breath.
How many times can we check in with the inhale? And the exhale. And then the whole body breathing, we sink, gather, release. Okay, bring our hands together in gratitude for another opportunity to practice. And we better open the windows because we used up all the oxygen that the plants provided. Thank you. Good morning, Sangha. Good morning to everyone out in internet land. Happy Passover to those of you who are Passover people and it's also April Fool's Day. And I think it would be really refreshing if someday Robert could do a Dharma talk on Buddha and the April Fool's Day. I, you know, I, I am not really, I was thinking about how to do this. Oh look, a flying saucer, really? Sorry, that's the best I got. No, never been one for April Fool's Day, but it's here. Announcements. So, next Sunday is our monthly potluck. Please feel free to unleash any hidden casseroles that you have on us. Anything that you've been dying to try, please bring them. And if you're going to bring them, it means you come a little early and you put them in the kitchen and, uh, and then we have food. And whatever shows up will divvy out among all of us. Then on Saturday uh, next weekend, same time as the potluck, Robert is going to be up in Seattle at the retreat. Um, is there still sign-ups available for the retreat? There are still sign-ups available for the retreat. On Thursday, April 5th, uh, Doug Pullen's new edition of the Basics of Mindfulness class is going to start six weeks uh, on Thursdays, 6 to 7.30 p.m. On April 14th, which is a Saturday, there's going to be an all-day retreat with Robert and Doug. What are love and compassion really? Sign-ups are open. Information on the website. There's going to be uh, the Jennifer Berezan concert at Unity Church in Portland. Robert loves her music and recommends it highly. You can find out about that um, on the internet. Just look up Jennifer Berezan, B-E-R-E-Z-A-N. Uh, on uh, Saturday, the 21st of April, Jim is going to do another Qigong half-day retreat. If you liked what he was doing this morning, you get four hours of it, plus tea, right? Tea doesn't cost extra? Okay. And then, please save the date for the end of April. We're going to have our annual Get Things Done Day here, which is really about just getting together and getting to know people. And while you're getting to know people, getting some things done. For today, who is doing Dharma consults? Anybody? Dharma consults? Dharma consults? Anybody? <laughs> All right, I guess Jim is doing Dharma consults. What are Dharma consults, you ask? If you have something that is coming up in your seated practice and you want to talk to another practitioner about it, please see Jim. If you have always wanted to start a practice and are looking for a quick on-ramp to doing that, please see Jim. There's a sign-up sheet there in the back by the door. There's three slots starting at 1210. Each one of them is 20 minutes. We also can do this at other times if you want to give me a call and you can't do it today. Hospitality. Um, we had apparently a magnificent women's retreat yesterday, but a lot of chairs were brought up from the living room. We need, I think it would be like five chairs to be brought down into the living room 
after Robert's Dharma talk. So if people could just count up among themselves, just, just bring down a chair. Just, we don't need all the chairs, just like a small handful of them. Uh, then as far as hospitality goes, we are changing the way we're doing hospitality. For those of you who have never been down there, we tend to kind of like do it up. You know, there are people who bring like food that you eat with a knife and a fork. And that is really labor intensive. And we've gotten the impression that it really is a burden on people to remember to do that and to wash dishes and to clean up. So we're going to make it a whole lot simpler. There's going to be some finger foods there every week. It's not going to be a big deal. Um, just don't even worry about bringing stuff that you've got to scoop out with a, with a spoon or eat with a fork. Just the whole, the whole thing there is to meet one another over a little bit of something to nosh on and some tea and coffee. And that's it. So don't sweat it. Speaking of engaging with this community, if you would like to engage with this community more, you have the chance to do that by being a volunteer. And Kirsten is our volunteer coordinator. She's raised her hand. Being a volunteer here is really about getting to know people and feeling more a part of the way this community functions. And it's a really wonderful thing to get to know people here. And volunteering gives us the chance to do that, plus get some stuff done that needs to get done in order for this place to keep on going. So if you have uh, the inclination to do that, please see Kirsten. We have a number of sits during the week. There's information on the website. We also have spiritual friends groups. There's information on that on the website under the community page. If you want to be able to practice more in a small intimate group on your own schedule without having to come here, and if you go on the website, you get, can get some information about that. And the final thing is, there's always our transitions project that, um, that uh, we've organized for a number of years, and we bring things over here. Michael graciously um, takes it over to the Transitions Project downtown and helps homeless people get on track with their lives. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a blessed day. Oh, Wally. Oh, well, it, well you say it, and then I'll repeat it, because we need a microphone. I'm just wondering if Michael could bring some slips in Um, why, why don't you talk about that with, with Michael after? Okay. <laughs>